welcome once again to my channel today we are going to have hematopoiesis and this is blood cell formation please just make sure you like and subscribe well hematopoiesis is the physiological process of blood cell formation this is the process of blood cell formation and this occurs in major two ways medullary and extramedullary The medullary is where this process occurs in the bone marrow and extramedullary where it occurs in sites other than the bone marrow. And if we are to take a look at this simple illustration, from zero days, up to the end of the first trimester, we shall see that the yolk sac is producing what? The cells, and this majorly produces RBCs. Because RBCs are needed in organogenesis and other roles, and at this point in time, many parts of the body have not yet been formed. So as the fetus grows, organogenesis is increasing and organs are being formed, when the liver is formed, um, at the end of, towards the end of the first trimester, the liver takes over because it is now formed until birth it will be producing red blood cells to the ninth month. This is the liver. The liver will be producing almost every blood cell, red, white, platelets, and so on. And at the end of the first trimester, up to about the seventh month, the spleen will also come in around here, up to here. The spleen will be forming red blood cells, white blood cells, and more. So, this is where we are now, seventh month, and this is extramedullary. This is the example of extra medulla re hematopoiesis. The bone marrow comes in after the fetus is now fully formed. Every organ is available. We even have the bones now. So at around the fourth month here, To even the postnatal life, the bone marrow will be producing blood cells, and this is medullary. At birth, most of the sites that produce blood cells other than the bone marrow will stop, but this does not necessitate that extramedullary hematopoiesis only occurs in the fetal life. Even in the postnatal life in cases of need, severe need of blood cells, maybe the bone marrow is not functional very well, maybe the demand is too much, there can be resumption of extramedullary hematopoiesis and these sites will still produce blood cells to help the bone marrow. The hematopoietic stem cell gives rise to these cells all of the blood cells these ones these ones here the hematopoietic stem cell is the first man in the thing and this has some good characteristics of self renewal proliferation and differentiation. Self renewal we mean before any cell is being formed. The hematopoietic stem cell, also called the pluripotent stem cell, because it is it is pluripotent because it it can differentiate in many blood cell types. It gives almost it gives rise actually to every lineage, pluripotent or multipotent. That's why it's called so 
if this is the hematopoietic stem cell, before differentiation and proliferation, the cell makes a clone copy of its own, the exact type. And one of these clones stays in the bone marrow, the other one is getting committed to blood cell formation. The one left in the bone marrow is for subsequent cell formation because we need to leave a copy of what will form other cells because this is a continuous process. This one is left, one goes and gets committed to producing various cell types. This overall process is regulated by what is called the hemato poetic growth factors. And these factors include interleukins, one to six. You have the circuit ligand. There is the G CSF, the MCSF, erythropoietin, popoietin, and more. These growth factors are responsible for the proliferation, differentiation, and maturation of hematopoietic stem cells. These features of the hematopoietic stem cells. It is the role of the growth factors. And the growth factors don't only stop their effect on the hematopoietic stem cells. They also carry the effect to the progenitors from the HSC to the progenitors and finally to mature cells. On the HSC, it is self renewal, proliferation, and differentiation. On the progenitors, now the progenitors are the next step after the HSCs. Progenitors can be of the myeloid or lymphoid. Now we are getting more committed. Here the cells are general, they can differentiate in all, in all the cell types. Now the progenitors can be for the myeloid lineage, lymphoid lineage, etc. Then the mature cells are the well differentiated and committed cells for a, for a specific task. So on the progenitors, these growth factors also make them more committed, more committed. They, all they do here is the progenitors should be committed. Myeloid, do the role in line with myeloid. Lymphoid, do only with lymphoid. That's the regulation these growth factors bring on. And for the mature cells, things like, like lifespan, um, survival in the body, the growth factors still do that role to these cells. In the young age, almost every bone produces blood cells. But as one grows, blood formation gets restricted to certain types of bones. And these include the flat bones, the ribs, such as the ribs, the iliac bones, the sternum, and proximal ends of long bones. This is so because as one grows, the red hematopoietic bone marrow gets converted into yellow non-hematopoietic marrow, and this cannot produce blood cells. So I think even this is why our great scholars came up with this formula. When you're examining a bone marrow specimen, there is some feature called cellularity. cellularity. So the light of the bone marrow is crucial, and it has a formula of 100 minus patient's age to give the cellularity. 
this is under normal. For a normal person, the formula gives the cellularity. For example, if you're 50 years, we expect the cellularity of your marrow to be 100 minus 50, which is 50% cellularity. Yes, this is where the formula comes from. Because as one grows this fat, the yellow non-hematopoietic marrow is fat and cellularity is a comparison of between the cellular components you see and the fat tissue you're seeing in the bone marrow. Hope the video gave a brief overview of hematopoiesis. Give a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thank you.